Hey everybody, Arachne Queen here and welcome to Care Clips. Now in Care Clips, I'm going to pick individual species of tarantulas, maybe by request from you guys, and I'm going to go over their personality, temperament, and how best to keep them. Today, we're going to be starting with one that usually ends up commonly as a first time tarantula, and that is the Grandma Stola Rosea, or commonly known as the Chilean rose-haired tarantula. Now honestly, I don't really believe that the Grandma Stola Rosea is the best first time tarantula for people. I mean, I ended up with one, but I didn't really know any better at the time. And the reason that I don't think they're the very best for people is most Grandma Stola Roseas are caught in the wild various stages of their life. And because of that, they end up with very testy temperaments. Now some people will say, oh no, my grandma stola rosea is perfectly sweet. Well yes, one of my grandma stola is perfectly sweet. The other one is not. Now the reason for that, I don't really know. Maybe it's age, maybe it's environment from where they came from, I don't know. But the Grandma Stola Rosea does have a bit of a chance of ending up a little bit more on the defensive and skittish side. And that's not something I would recommend for a first time tarantula. What I would recommend actually is a member of the Brachiopelma species, like a Brachiopelma smithy or a Brachiopelma albopelosum like I have. Now on to the Grandma Stola Rosea. The Chilean rose hair tarantula, as it is called, does indeed come from Chile comes from quite a few different environments, but primarily this tarantula is an arid species. Now if anybody doesn't know what the word arid means, it means very dry. Basically, it's a tarantula that you don't really need to keep moist in their cage and really like watch their humidity or anything. They're fine with their water dish, and every now and then I'll overflow the water dish to make sure that there's a little extra humidity maybe around the time of molting season, because it helps them determine when their seasons are. Chile is six months different from our, here in the States, uh, timeline, so they can mess up their molting process and their feeding process and everything like that. So just make sure that there's water in the bowl and make sure that every now and then you overflow it just a little so that it has that added moisture. If you overflow it too much or get water all over their cage, they'll get stressed out and you don't want that. They climb all over the sides of their walls. So how should you house these little guys? Well, they're terrestrial species, meaning that you should have more horizontal space in the cage rather than vertical space. Not that these little tarantulas have anything against climbing, but they prefer to stay on the ground and are more comfortable there. You should always have um, about I would say I do about four inches of dirt in the cage or coconut husk or whatever it is you use. Um, make sure it's dry. And I actually have a rather large cage for both of my Grandma Stola Roseas, but that's because they kind of came with them, so I just left them in there and they're fine. Uh, so mine kind of like to scoot dirt around every now and then and it makes them happy. Now, these are not necessarily burrowing tarantulas. However, if you can provide them with something like a hive, like a little wood log, or maybe even a potting pot, you know, pot, uh, on its side and buried partially in the dirt halfway, the tarantula will love that as a hide. Now, some Grandma Stola Roseas don't want hides. They don't want anything to hide, and then that's fine. But my girls seem to like theirs an awful lot. So try it out and see if they like it. Now, if you're brand spanking new to tarantulas in general, there's a couple of things you should know in general about keeping tarantulas. Always keep your lids escape proof. You may think, oh, there's no way a tarantula could get out of this, but you would be surprised. They can even, like the ones that kind of the mesh wiring on top, I've seen tarantulas pick through and escape through that. So make sure that you have something as a lid, don't ever leave it open, because if a tarantula, and a, or even a Grandma Stola Rosea, decides that it wants to get out, it will. It, 
like I said, it has no objection to climbing. So make sure the lid's on tight and that it has ventilation and everything, but don't make it too easy for them to escape. And another thing, some people think that tarantulas are like geckos or lizards and everything in the sense that they need a heating pad under their cage. Absolutely do not use a heating pad or a heating lamp of any kind with a tarantula. Basically, whatever temperature is good for you will be good for the tarantula, especially the Gramostola rosea. You know, we have air conditioning, we have heaters, everything like that, all sorts of us do. And so if you have those things, your tarantula should be fine. If you use a heat pad or a heat lamp, you might end up with a cooked tarantula. I mean, it kind of sounds gross, but that's the truth. Those heating pads are too brutal and too strong, even if you turn them down, for a tarantula to comfortably have a Now let's talk about handling and their personalities. Like I said earlier, for the most part, the Gramostola rosea is a pretty okay calm tarantula. However, you're always going to get that one who's nuts and crazy and wants to throw up a defensive stance if you look at it wrong, and that would be my tumble. So if you have one that can be handled, um, Always be careful with the handling. I will do a video about handling soon too, like proper handling. Um, Gramostola roseas do bite. Any tarantula can bite. Basically, if it has a mouth, it can bite you. That's just a general rule in the animal kingdom that everyone should go by. Now, with Gramostola roseas though, if they're gonna bite, if they're upset enough to bite, they will typically give plenty of warning that they're going to. First, they may kick their ultracating hairs, which yes, the Gramostola rosea does have. It is a new world species. Basically, the little barb-like hairs that they kick off with their hind legs are on their butt. And they get in your skin, in like mucous membranes, your eyes and nose, and it's horrifically painful. I'll tell you that straight up. It's so miserable. And um, also, if they like strike up, like with their legs up in the air, that means back off. Put her down, stop touching her, whatever. And if they strike with their front legs but without their teeth, that is a serious warning of why aren't you putting me down? I'm upset. And if you're dense enough to keep holding her, then she'll probably bite you. Mind you, the first bite will probably be a dry bite, meaning that no venom will come out of her fangs. And it's essentially like a warning shot. So it'll hurt, but it won't hurt as bad as it would if it were venomized. So if your tarantula is in any way uncomfortable with being held or you're not comfortable with holding it, then don't do it. Just That's a good rule. If you're not comfortable, then don't do it because the tarantula won't be comfortable either and that's how bad things happen. Remember to always hold a tarantula over a surface, like a table, or um, have it sitting on the ground. You never stand and hold a tarantula up. The fall from your hands to the ground could potentially easily kill a tarantula. They're very fragile creatures internally, and that sort of thing could cause a rupture in its carapace or even internal bleeding, and there's nothing you can do at that point. So feed it roaches or crickets, depending on its size. They're about a medium-sized tarantula full grown. And make sure their water dish doesn't run dry, and there you have it, you're taking care of a tarantula. They're pretty easy to take care of, especially the grandma solas. So don't stress over it. The tarantula does not need to be held or anything like that. It doesn't get anything out of being held. Um, and just enjoy your pet. If it turns into something that's a look, don't touch kind of pet, that's absolutely fine. They're beautiful. All tarantulas are beautiful in my opinion, but it's not something that you actually have to interact with like on a daily basis. So tarantulas make great pets, the Gramostola rosea is pretty awesome. 